Hello, it's Scott Manley here. This morning, I got up and had to put on my dressing gown of doom because New Shepard's flight number 23 suffered an in-flight abort. It looks like the booster engine failed just around max Q. The capsule, of course, separated safely. If there had been crew on there, they would have very likely have been safe, but it was, it looked like a very rough ride to me. If you look at this New Shepard velocity as it fails, it sort of sticks around and then shoots up to like 100 miles an hour greater speed and then very quickly decelerates. They were in the transonic regime when this happened, which means the deceleration forces on the spacecraft were extraordinarily high. It would not have been pretty. But that's better than sticking with a booster that just had an engine failure. So they had previously tested the launch abort system five years ago. And in that case, they triggered the launch abort while the booster was still healthy. The booster actually landed itself safely, which they weren't even sure was going to happen. If we replay the event in slow motion, as we run up to the event, you see these flashes in the exhaust. That's usually an indication that there is debris getting into the combustion chamber and flashing, you know, making the exhaust less optically thick. This is also known as engine rich exhaust. And then we get catastrophic failure of the engine. You'll notice debris shooting out the side and the rocket yawing to the left. I think the engine sort of basically had a uh, containment failure and the thrust went sideways, causing the booster to rotate. At that point, the automated systems took over and the capsule separated. You'll notice that the user interface says zero G. This is very much not zero G. They are accelerating hard to escape that rocket and then decelerating hard because of the airflow. If you look at the interior views of the new Shepard capsule, that big cylinder in the middle there, that is the launch escape engine. It kind of gets in the way, but it does save your life. So anyway, the capsule continued through its recovery process. It deployed its drogue chutes and then its main chutes, and then it landed out in the desert safely. The booster, as far as we can tell, did not get destroyed. It didn't generate a cloud of debris. We looked at weather radar. There was no evidence of that. And there is a brief moment of telemetry just as it was about to land. Basically, the telemetry switched over to landing mode, and if you look, booster descent velocity going up and down and then freezing. And that, to me, tells me the booster was intact, it was sending telemetry, and because the speed was changing, it was probably tumbling end over end and changing its uh, drag. So the booster's probably a wreck in the desert. The capsule and the experiments will be recovered, and hopefully they will get reflown. But as of right now, I don't know if there's another New Shepard booster that is available or in a position where they'll be able to fly that. I'm going to have to find out more. This is a very short video because we don't have much information and it just happened. This is obviously an interesting time for Blue Origin's uh, space tourism program. They've been operating it for just over a year and now this looks likely to ground them for a fairly long time and they may very well lose a number of customers who see the potential dangers. Again, the launch abort system would have saved the crew and the passengers, but the forces involved in the rapid acceleration and then subsequent deceleration would not have been kind and people could well have uh, you know, had injuries. We don't really have any idea what caused the engine failure. All I can say is that it was near max Q and at max Q they're throttling the engine down and then they throttle the engine up. And when you're changing the speed of the engine, it's a dynamic environment and it can put stresses on it that it won't experience through the rest of the flight. This is Blue Origin's BE3 engine. It's a hydrogen fueled tap off cycle engine. Apparently this month has not been too good for American hydrogen fueled rockets. I hope the Delta IV Heavy doesn't get afflicted by this. Anyway, I'll probably have a more detailed follow-up later, but right now I have other things to do. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.